Well, I started out as a tower operator uh, in Grand Central Terminal, and it was 1984. That was a pretty crazy year around here. We had fun working there, but I'm sure the people, the powers that be, didn't think it was fun. We had trains crashing into the side of each other. We had fires in the tunnel. It was, it was a pretty exciting time. Shortly after we became Metro North, I guess the conductors staged a strike and we spent six weeks on the street. So, so we're kind of taken aback by that. Six weeks without pay is, you know, puts a hurting on people. Labor was split. Some were dedicated and wanted to do a good job and some just wanted to protect their jobs. I got assigned to uh, have the third trick at Burke Tower up in South Norwalk. So it was actually an interesting introduction to the railroad. Just because we became Metro North on January 1st, 1983, really didn't change the, uh, the status of the physical plant of the railroad. And we were still trying to make it, uh, make it work until such time as the infusion of funding from the MTA came through and from CDOT to rebuild the system. We had at least a derailment a week a list of the realm a week. And uh, we were working seven days a week, down nights a day, try to, re to fix the tracks and so. We didn't have as many trains running at that time, and uh, we had longer trains, and everybody was just crunched in, and uh, it, it was very difficult because there, so many, there were so many standees at that time, and the trains kept breaking down a lot. Prior to the M2 fleet being completely delivered, uh, we had coaches that were still there, and I remember them having to have to put bolts through the siding, the, the side sheets to, to hold them to the car bodies. Uh, it, it, was, it was rough. Parts management didn't exist. Uh, we had no control over how many cars were out of service, what was wrong. It was shove the cars out the door for the next rush hour. Some of the bathrooms, they had these sheet metal doors on there. So after 125th Street, I uh, went in to uh, use the facility, and um, between then and Grand Central, I couldn't get out, get out of the, uh, the restroom. So when we hit the block in, in Grand Central, I physically had actually kicked the window out, and I climbed out the window, and all the passengers are getting off the train, they're looking at me, laughing at me. The floors were wet from leaks in the ceiling. They were left in the yards overnight. The floors literally froze, and I remember conductors skating their way down the aisles trying to collect fares. At one point, Ed uh, Whitney told stories. I heard it several times from him and several other people. The MTA had come to him and said, why can't you maintain these steam coaches in better condition? Ed walked up to one of the New Haven cars, one of the American Flyer cars, had doors at each end. They were core 10 construction with stainless steel sheathing on the outside. He stuck his fingers behind the sheathing, gave it a tug, and 75 feet worth of stainless steel sheathing came crashing at the feet of the MTA people. And he said, and you expect me to maintain these cars? It was uh, uh, a lot, of, lot more priorities than we had money to deal with. And it was really uh, like a triage, an emergency room, of figuring out where best to spend the money first to deal with the biggest problems. We had uh, major problems with the track itself. We had safety issues for our customers, for our employees, and we were also in the middle of a major renovation of the entire Upper Harlem line. From new station platforms to uh, third rail being installed, new welded rail being installed, ties surfacing, uh, major, major undertaking with a lot of people involved and, you know, shortcuts were taken. When I was told the morale was bad, um, I didn't think it was bad, it was like disjointed because uh, people from different walks were trying to put something together which they hadn't before. One of the things that we needed to overcome in the employment department where I started as an employment representative was the leaning tower of resumes, the backlog of paper of all the anxious people that wanted to join the organization. Every need you could possibly have, you had to work on. Uh, it wasn't just recruitment, it was establishing new policies and procedures, uh, new services. It was just addressing all needs for a new company. Well, my father got me in. I, he sent me down on a Thursday. They called me Friday to start on Monday. That's how fast we got in in those days. You know, you can get your sons in there real fast. It was to hire people 
a family related. Like if the father was work here, you got a son here, you got a cousin here. And you know, they had to perform because they were fear that if you don't do good, you get kicked in the butt. It just seemed like the men were old and crusty and you know. Uh, but as you worked and proved yourself, they would just take you under their wing and just help you to the best that they could. The racial issues were a little tougher because there, there was definitely racism here. Um, there was genderism, there was homophobia, there was anti-Semitism. Um, I could keep going. I was uh, put on board with a, my first gang. Nick Montleone was the foreman at that time which he's since become a supervisor. And, um, you know, we, we started small in a way. It was, it, was, it was something building. You could feel it even then. There was something going on here, you know. Nick was young, I was young. You know, there was other people that were coming on that were young. We started to build a little core of people in a gang. And we started to go out to try to do some work. Work. Because there was like different, a different mentality at that time. I mean, Harmon shop was run down, such as it is today still. White Plains was old, a couple of tracks. Brewster was there, but basically non-existent. Stanford was non-existent. We were working on our trailers and so forth. New Haven had the newest facility and the youngest fleet at that time, the M2s. Even though there were problems with contracts, and there seemed to be problems with management, and there seemed to be inequity with, with other outside agencies. I think the, 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 the energy of trying to get the system and trying to build a railroad to run uh, to a performance level totally outweighed uh, the morale at the time. One of the first programs I worked on was uh, the Croton Harmon shop mm -hmm. as a construction inspector. And the, the shop, we needed to renovate the shop, but it wasn't to bring it to a state of an art uh, facility like we do today. It was really just to make it a safe place to work for the employees. There was tons of asbestos there. The windows were broken. Pigeons were flying in and out of the windows. There were probably just as many pigeons as there were employees. There was nothing here, uh, just, just the dispatchers and a, a, a very small operation and uh, no, no computers, no uh, centralized traffic control equipment as such. And uh, Ed and I were kind of pointed in a direction, uh, given some, some documentation on, the, on, on some uh, computer operating systems, given a tiny little, little office with, with a door with, no, uh, with nothing, nothing but a, a hole where the, uh, the doorknob should be and a chain to lock it up at night, and uh, a couple milk crates to sit on to, uh, to uh, sit and study and get, prepare ourselves for what was coming. Uh, which we did. We didn't have networks. We didn't have PCs uh, to speak of. No real PC applications. The few that we did have were sporadic and spread around throughout the company. Maybe a department or two had one or two PCs uh, running their own Lotus spreadsheet. Sometime during the early to mid 80s, we were like inundated by the homeless. I guess at one time we were, I guess, like the second largest shelter in the city of New York. On track 22, uh, what is now the passageway to North End Access, uh, there was trash piled there over 150 cubic yards. That's enough to fill a house. And this was almost every day we had these piles of trash. But it wasn't only trash there. It was the homeless that was in the trash looking for food. It was the rats doing the same thing. Costco Power Plant, West Farm Substation, the two major sources of supply of power for the New Haven line. Uh, we just went from incident to incident to incident was the same thing. Power off, uh, something blew up, electrical equipment failed, people stranded on trains up and down the New Haven line. They yelled at you because they, there was no trains. We were always, always at the mercy of turnarounds. The train came in, if it was late, they were mad. It seemed like during the winter, every other day, there was a seat notice to be put together and distributed to the customers so they would have an understanding of what went on in the morning. 1,300 injuries in a year. And, you know, we felt lucky if uh, we didn't kill somebody, uh, you know, every year. That's really where we, were, where we were. We were on the defensive instead of the offensive. There was always problems. There was always technical problems, uh, almost to the point where you'd work all weekend 
and barely get control by Monday morning of one, one control point. We even felt that the entire animal kingdom was against us. We had squirrels, we had raccoons. They attacked our system left and right. We were wondering, is there anybody out there that's on our side? Any given day was probably a 12 hour day, 13 hour day, something along those lines. But then again, you know, you always subject to the calls in the middle of the night. Then the mentality kind of changed too. It was like, you know, it's how can we do something? Or when are we gonna do it? Or let's go do it. I thought the morale was good in that sense, but it wasn't good in the sense that there was any idea of, uh, of a company, of Metro North. There wasn't any kind of a weakness. There wasn't like a team spirit. And that was probably the next phase, building uh, teams.